Hey guys, this is Buck. Um, I've got a breakdown video here. This is going to be mainly geared towards trolling motors, uh, but it's the difference between your lit acid to lithium. It's going to have runtime with real life examples. I'm um, going to go through a breakdown. I posted charts earlier and I had a ton of questions um, through Messenger and everything come back. So I figured I'd give a breakdown video. I'm also going to kind of show you how I did the math. So if you're looking at potentially a different amp hour battery, or you starting out with a little bit different setup, you've got a good comparison here to kind of figure out for yourself what kind of benefits you're picking up to go into different amps or voltage systems here. Now, the second video, I'm gonna try to do some charging stuff on the boat, play around with some watt hours there. And then the third one, I might build my battery pack. This one is mainly if you're just debating, hey, do I need to go 36 volt? Do I need to go lithium? What am I picking up or losing there? And the easiest comparison that I'm going to use has been the power tool industry. So th this transition has basically already happened and we've seen the benefit. So I used to do plumbing back in the day, NICAD and lid acid type batteries was what everybody was using. Now, when I would pull a drill out the truck, I would pull the trigger on the drill and the drill spun really quick. I knew chances are that battery had a decent amount of juice to it. And as I was drilling holes, you would notice that drill just slow down slow down so eventually it would just come to a stop but it was a transition on losing that power now when lithium came out i could take that same drill it didn't matter if it was fully charged or almost dead as long as it had enough juice to spin the drill it typically had basically full power if you started drilling holes it would be wide open wide open and then when the, the battery would finally completely discharge the d tool would be dead and when they started putting the little buttons on, that was a nice feature because you knew where you stood with the lithium because touching it or spinning it really gave you no idea. We've seen the same transition happen from brushed to brushless. So the benefits on the trolling motor, um, the argument there is it's a quieter unit, less interference with your electronics, but also there's a power efficiency um, argument to be made as well. It's more efficient, powerful, and a durability argument as well. Not that a lot of previous tools that were brushed, if they were built correctly, brush can last a really long time too. Brushless still has the advantage. So when you're looking at these, and I'm gonna post a kind of some clips at the end if you're just wanting to pause and like look at the actual information, jump to the end there, and I'll put some timestamps too. Now these are all 24 volt. Uh, and these are all 36. And these are common battery usages that you'll see on boats. The first one here, this is two 12 volt lit acid batteries. They are 85 amp hours. Now with lit acid, you can't use the full amp hour. Um, some people like to only discharge about 50%. Um, some of them, I believe they can say as high as 80%, depending on how the battery is constructed, constructed for a deep cycle and how heavy duty it is. I'm using 0.7. Um, you may also notice as you're getting closer as that voltage is dropping, maybe you don't quite have the same amount of power. Uh, maybe the GPS or other stuff becomes a little bit spotty because of that voltage drop. So if we use 0.7, that becomes 59.5 usable amp hours. Now if you say, hey, I want to play it safe and only use 0.50, do the same math and just do 0.5. If, you, if you're buying a heavy duty battery that says you can take it all the way to 80%, do 0.8 and that's gonna be a little bit more usable hours. So I'm using the Garmin Force, which is what I have, and this is my personal comparison here. Now I'm currently running this exact setup, lead acid here, and I can kill my battery in a day of fishing. Uh, even come up short, depending on what exactly I'm doing. Now I will say, and this is why I did this chart, you'll have different answers for everybody on hey, what big a difference did lithium make? If you're on a lightweight bass boat and you just do a little bank fishing and you're just crawling along 10, 20% just creeping along, doing some cast and throwing, yeah, you might can get all weekend on that battery and that might be a true statement. Get up in a river channel and you're running 50, 60% fighting currents wide open and you say, hey, less than a half a day, I'm dead in the water. That could also be a true statement. Same trolling motor, same battery setup, just two totally different usage here. So in the math that we're doing here is we're taking that 59.5, that's the usable amp hours, 
and we're doing it by two amps. That gives you 29 hours of use. You're dividing as you go up here. You go to say 54 and you're about wide open. You're getting to that about that hour of use wide open on those batteries. And again, tweak your math if you want to do anything different here. If you have amp hour batteries that are 100, do the same math, replace the 85 with the 100, and there goes your usage here. Now where this becomes beneficial, and say you're debating just changing to lit acid, but a different amp. Well, if you know that most of the time with my boat and my type of fishing, I'm at 40 to 50% thrust, and I'm getting, you know, four to six hours of use, hey, where do I need to go to pick up my full day of use? Where do I need to be amp hour wise? And this is where that math comes into benefit here. Two 12 volt lithium batteries, or if you want to do a single 50, this becomes the same amp. So if you have two 12s and both of them are 50, or if you buy a 24 volt 50 amp, both of that is a 50 amp of use. Most lithiums will say somewhere around 99% of discharge. Some of them say 100%. But that's going to be pretty accurate again these are all generics even if you go on youtube and you watch them pull the amps fully down on a battery some of them over advertise some of them under advertise just a little bit but in this scenario if you swapped from here to here you chances are you might have actually dropped your usage a little bit going to lead acid now if you're just replacing batteries and you have a lightweight john boat or bass boat and you're shooting for weight and you're in this 10 20 percent category you just want a lighter weight longer life value potentially there you go two 12 volt 100 amps we can see we're now getting into some good jumps compared to that lead acid and then this is 125 amp and then your hour runtime for each of those now going from 24 to 36 there's two things to keep in mind one is where you're using that here may not be exactly the same for a 36 volt. So luckily for us, you can switch from a 24 volt to a 36 volt and they make a nice breakdown of what your usage here. So for instance, if you're 50%, that's 14 amps on 24 volt that's 10 amps on 36 so you see the efficiency thing there and you're even producing a little bit more pound of thrust so it's not a one for one comparison here you can see and going to a 36 volt system you're picking up an extra 20 pounds of force the way the force is rated so you're picking up efficiency and weight so if you constantly ran at 30 percent at the 24 maybe you're going to be slightly less somewhere in there running the 36 volt and this is some efficiency notes here so at 10 percent you almost have twice the runtime doing a 36 volt so again if you're just running at 10 percent switch to a 36 volt system and you're getting a lot more usage you're going by adding that extra battery and this has got a little more amps here but again change your math to whatever batteries you're looking at or you have uh, but these are comparisons using these numbers over here. Um, eight extra hours of runtime at 16 foot, five at 23, um, two point extra hours at 50% with a little bit more power. And ultimately you're picking up runtime and power for that voltage swap there. Now, same thing, if you're running a 36 volt system, there goes 312 amp, or excuse me, 312 volt batteries. 125 amp hours times the 0.7, 87.5 usable, divided by how many amps you're using, and there goes your usage. So if you're already running 36 volt, and if the other thing I'll say is if you have the force and you're running a certain percentage, and you say, hey, I'm coming up half of this. Well, at some point, maybe you need to check your batteries. Maybe you have an old lead acid that's you know kind of on its way out then this is going to be the 63 amp like if you got the Dakota there's a popular one discharge you can see kind of the same scenario so these the big three lit acid potentially has a little bit more runtime than the lithium and then as you start getting in the higher amps going up to 100 that's going to be where your big difference is 
Now, if somebody system misses up around 50% of discharge, this number is going to be a lot less, and the lithium in this case would be more. But again, use tweak your math to what you're using here. Same thing with the 100 amp hours, and then the 125. Force luckily has some nice breakdowns, and this is where the math, but it would be similar um, if you were going to use the ranch unit or another. And the advantage of lithium is your, your lighter weight, probably longer life. Uh, good quality lithium, but again, uh, lithium can vary in quality depending on manufacturer, and you're going to get more usable amp hours or energy out of that. Also, the benefits to lead acid is going to be cheaper. You can purchase them locally. If somebody, say, if you have a warranty issue, go to Advance, Walmart, wherever you bought it, and get it exchanged. I would look into whatever lithium companies you're seriously debating, because if it does mess up, are they just going to do a manufacturer defect? And if they say, hey, you cycled it enough or whatever, they're not going to do. They're not going to honor that warranty. Um, do you have to pay for shipping returns? How are their warranty process? Can you find people who's had issues and that the company stood behind them and fixed them? Because lit, no joke, lithium for most people is a big purchase going forward. So that should kind of answer some of your questions there between the difference. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Um, if you have any differences, let me know. This is a chart I found and this is some common motor thrust to max draw. Again, this is max, but if you was running it wide open, how far, and you can play and plug with some of these. Um, if you have your trolling motor, you can go out in the water, do different speeds, see what kind of amps you're pulling, and plug in the math here. There's also probably quite a few, if you do internet searching, probably find somebody that's already done that, or even call on the manufacturer, they could probably uh, get you some type of chart like Garmin did here. Now, that's that as far as going over the numbers. Um, the project I'm debating playing around with. So if you've seen these tools, and I have a handful of these batteries. There are 40 volts. Uh, majority of mine, I got four six amp hour batteries. Um, if you've got the mower, the power inverter, the chainsaw, um, these batteries work. Um, I can pull a good 15 amps on those batteries, playing around with some testing. So, kind of curious if I've already got this, instead of maybe going some of the bigger lithium batteries just for the trolling motor, I am debating building my own power source out of these. Um, if I do that or play around with that, I'll try to get it on the water, get some run times, but I think the math works out correctly. And this is where you start getting into watt hours. So if you see this battery, and you've ever wondered where they're getting this. So if you see that, that 27 watt hours. A lot of times when you're shopping lithium, that is what you're going to see is some type of watt hours number. And what this is, this is an 18 volt battery. And it's 1.5 amp hours. So that's how they get that 27 watt hours. It's the same way if you see a 36 volt battery and it's a 50 amp hour and you see 1800 watt hours that's how they're getting that energy number it's how much energy is in that battery potentially used and that's you know 100 percent you want to say 99 and if you did the same math with lithium you would have to factor your depth of discharge at 60 70 80 percent what are you what is that battery capable of pulling down to so if you take the ryobi 40 volt 6 amp hour that's 240 watt hours if you got four of them, that's 960, which I actually have four of those batteries plus uh, 200 if, with my five amp hour. I actually have an inverter that's 300 watt inverter from Ryobi that I can run my 12 volt charger. So next trip to the lake, I'm gonna plug that up, hook a meter to it, see my watt hours, how much energy I'm actually using out of these batteries back into the system. And I'm thinking, I'm going to be able to do a full day of fishing just like I like to do, running the trolling motor, and I'm not going to come up short this time. That's my hope. I'm going to post a video and play with the numbers, and uh, that'll probably be the second video you see here. The next one, if you had 6, 1440, 8, 1920, 10, 
would be 2,400 watt hours. That's a lot of energy. Uh, I'm debating building a, a six. I might play with a four first, but building like a six. And then if you had six more on hand, halfway through the day, swap the batteries, bring them back to camp, charge them separate from the boat. Um, it was kind of my thought process. And I thought a little bit about 18 volt batteries like these. Rigid makes has a lifetime warranty. I've got some Ryobi 18 volt batteries as well. Um, but it really starts adding up to get a decent amount of watt hours. So if you did six, again, you're taking 18 times six amp hours. That's 648 watt hours. To run 36 volts, you would need two sets. So that'd be a total of 12 batteries, 1296. If you did eight and two sets, that would be 1728. Um, same math here if you did an 8 amp hour, but you're getting into a lot of batteries, a lot of space. Um, don't know if running them like that would be worth it versus these. These are, you know, a decent amount of power. They've got their own cooling abilities. One, another thing I like, which a lot of 18 volts do as well. Um, so out on the water, I got my 6 amp hour times 18 volt, and I've got a 4 amp hour times 18 volt this is Ryobi they make an 18 volt 300 watt capable and it can plug into a 12 volt battery to charge so that goes 216 watt hours 432 and then using the 40 just in batteries I have around 1800 additional watt hours that I have power to avert over now anytime you invert you lose power somewhere in that it's not a hundred percent efficiency there but if what I already have battery wise, I can take on the boat and use to get a full day of fishing, there's no point in me rushing out to spend a bunch of money on lithium. Also, if I already have these batteries, plan on buying more. Um, I have the chainsaw, um, probably about to get the, the mower, and I even think this would be a cool little power pack here. But if I already got 40 volt Ryobi batteries, if I can buy a few more that is useful to me outside of fishing, I wish I professionally fished, definitely not the case, but this would be useful to me, cutting grass, cutting trees, hedge trimming, anything that 40 volt system's for, that's a useful battery to have around the house. And then if I can also run my boat at the weekend, that's a nice benefit there. So that's the last thing I'm probably gonna play around with. Um, also another thing that some people should keep in mind is there are some companies that make on the water chargers where if you have an outboard that's making wires, it's converting and charging that battery. If you're one to go fish a cove, fire the outboard up, run around to another corner of the lake because they're not biting there, and then drop the trolling motor again, and you can recharge the batteries on the water, and that takes care of all your fishing needs, that may be a smarter thing to spend money in the charger Especially if you have good lithium lead acid batteries right now, it may be smarter for you to spend money in the charger and then when the lead acids die, do the math, hey, does it make more sense for lithium? And that's the other argument with lithium is if they do last three times longer, you've you know paid for itself by buying one battery for a decade versus three or four sets, depending on how you use them. And again, depends on how you actually use the lead acid batteries, how you keep the charge on them. Uh, there's different variables there that does either extend or shorten the life of, of any battery. But anyway, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. Uh, I think I've covered most of the math here. Again, I'm going to do a couple screenshots here in a second of this. Again, use your scenario, plug your math in to do comparisons here. But this is the basic way to do the math. If you have any questions, ask. Hope you all have a good one.